pushing the Ford C-Max to the max. And it's absolutely responsive too. Why gasoline engines make hybrids possible. And that's what allows the electric motor to run. SST is brought to you by Stark Auto Sales, home of the ultimate worldwide scratch and dent car sale. Well, hello fellow gearheads. I'm Rick Walker. Welcome to another edition of SST. What an amazing show we have lined up for you today. We are going to introduce you to the one, the only, the incomparable Silver Elvis. That's right, he's going to be here. We're also going to talk to you all about the Bond Bug. It's going to take you back in time. And we're going to tell you why gasoline engines make hybrids possible. But first, here's our review of the all-new Ford C-Max. The C-Max is Ford's answer to the Toyota Prius. It is a hybrid that was originally designed for the European market, but is now assembled for North America in Michigan. The C-Max uses lithium-ion battery packs and combines an electric motor configuration with a 2-liter gasoline engine. The engine and electric motor run harmoniously together, with gasoline engine charging the batteries when needed. Energy is also recovered when braking. A computer maximizes mileage by switching to an electric power when needed and available. You may be familiar with lithium-ion batteries already. They're often in laptops, iPods, and cell phones. Similarly, when the battery starts to expire, it will not be able to hold a charge for as long. But unlike with your other devices, the cost of replacing this battery will run you about $8,000 to $10,000. Luckily, Ford has an electronic component warranty for about eight years, gambling that the battery will last at least that long. This is the Ford C-Max Hybrid, and if I could describe it in one word, Colleen, it would be surprising. What about you? I think it's pretty surprising as well. Um, I thought it would be a lot more of a compact car feel, but in the inside, it felt a lot more like an SUV. And it's absolutely responsive too, uh, both in terms of the brake and the gas pedal. Real-world experiences with fuel economy seem to vary widely. During our week-long test run, the average fuel economy came in for us at about 6.5 liters per 100 kilometers. It's advertised at about 4.1 liters, or 70 miles per gallon. Horsepower ratings seem a little strange. The combined electric and gas power output is rated at 188 horsepower. The C-Max is tall, not surprising since that is a European design cue, and as we said, this car was originally designed for the European market. The C-Max is aggressively priced. Its true value will only be revealed over time as the owner determines if the fuel savings are enough to offset the upfront cost as well as maintenance and repairs over the long run. Would you buy this car? I like the feeling of something more compact, but if I was going to go for a hybrid, if I wanted something with an SUV feel, this is something that I would go for, but for my own personal preference, I wouldn't get it. I'd buy it <laughs> if I was gonna buy a hybrid. Now, if you're into hybrids, we are going to tell you now why gasoline engines make hybrids possible. It's all because of aluminum blocks, aluminum heads that breathe better because of multi-valve construction. In a nutshell, today's internal combustion engines are at the top of their technological game. So I'm sitting here in the all-new Ford C-Max Hybrid, and I'm here to talk about why gasoline-powered engines have made hybrids possible. 
Now, it is true that the technology being used on the electric side of these vehicles has come a long way. It's made these vehicles uh, more practical because they now have more range, they charge more efficiently, the battery systems are better. But really, at the heart of this, uh, this kind of vehicle, you have two power plants. You have the electric motor and then you have the gasoline powered engine. And in a hybrid, that gasoline powered engine pumps electricity back into the battery pack and that's what allows the electric motor to run. The braking system also is often used to pump energy back into the batteries which then of course is converted back into power through the electric motor. But here's the thing. The gasoline powered engines in these cars have to be a lot smaller today in order for that whole system to work. If you have an electric motor and a gasoline powered engine under the hood, well you don't have a lot of room for either the gasoline engine or the electric motor. Now electric motors generally take up a lot less space than a gasoline powered engine. Today, to get say 100 or 110 horsepower out of a four cylinder power plant, well you can do that with a much uh, smaller engine than you used to have to have. So today, say even like 1.8 liters, 1.7 liters, an engine with that kind of displacement can still give you the kind of horsepower you need to provide the kind of power that people have come to expect in today's automobiles. That allows you to put a smaller gasoline engine under the hood, which then of course creates the electricity that charges the batteries and allows the vehicle to use the electric motor to get you further down the road, making the whole system more efficient. So you see, it's actually better technology going into gasoline engines that contributes largely to the success and the viability of hybrid vehicles today. Now, you're going to want to stay with us after the break. We're going to show you the Bond Bug. It's going to take you back in time. Hi, this is Wonder Woman from Fan Expo, and there's more SSD coming on up. Hey everybody, welcome back to SST. We're going to take you back in time now to show you a car called the Bond Bug. We found it at the biggest outdoor car show in Canada, the Steve Plunkett Fleetwood Country Cruise Inn. But this is one of the smallest cars you're ever likely to find. It only has three wheels. The Bond Bug is a strange, futuristic looking vehicle with a fiberglass body. It gets its power from a small 700cc reliant four-cylinder engine, which develops just 31 horsepower. The Bug was designed as an economy car for the masses, but between 1970 and 1974, production topped out at just over 2,000 units. All of the cars were produced in tangerine orange, with the exception of six units which were produced in white as promotional vehicles for the Rothmans Cigarette Company. This car has a top speed of 80 miles per hour. A Bond Bug chassis was used as the platform for Luke Skywalker's land speeder in the original Star Wars movie. It's a fun car to drive, but its three-wheel design makes this car somewhat unstable. They were prone to rollovers, which is one of the main reasons they never sold very well. Off we go, full speed now, to the St. Thomas Raceway Park. That's where we uncovered a funny car rivalry between Rocky Osek, who drives the Solid Rock, and Mark Horvath, the shoe behind the Yankee. Check this thing out. This is a great piece of entertainment, a great day at the Strip for anybody who's into racing of any kind. 
is a showdown of the St. Thomas Raceway Park, 1970s style. Two world famous funny cars are here, and the drivers are ready to go head to head. Mark Horvath is the shoe for the damn Yankee, and Rocky Osik is the man behind the wheel of Solid Rock. Both are part of the Great Lakes nostalgia funny car circuit. What's the best part of the show so far today? I think the best part is all the socializing, but uh, we brought in funny cars this year, which is new and uh, different for up here. Back in the 70s, funny cars were the kings of the strip. These blown, alcohol-powered beasts generated sold-out crowds at raceways across North America. And no wonder, if you look up the definition of horsepower, you'll see the words funny car. Obviously it goes pretty fast. What kind of uh, horsepower you got in this engine and how fast can you get this car to go? On a quarter mile good track, I can get it up 200 miles an hour in 690 area. Solid Rock is a 1971 Mustang Mach 1. It began life as the Ghetto Rat during its initial campaign in the Chicagoland area. Today, Rocky brings back memories for fans with each pass down the strip. What, what about this, uh, this Chatham Day event brought you here? Um, we were invited up here, uh, our leader of our group, Denny Salswimmer, uh, talked to the track and, and they said they'd like to have two cars up here, and so I said I'll go. Do you enjoy working on these cars more than other cars? We love it. Honestly, working on these cars, it's much better, but roundy round cars, they make me dizzy. Um, being able to turn a wrench on these cars, you, you get to go out and you watch it go from zero to 220 miles an hour in like five seconds. It's crazy. So you hoping to take away a big prize? Oh yeah, I'm hoping to whoop up on that damn Yankee car. He, he got me that last run, but there's second one's always another shot. Do you have any special techniques you're gonna use this time? Well, I keep asking him to give me a senior citizen discount, but he refuses to do it. And I, I don't know, I'm gonna maybe have to see if I can get him for elder abuse or something. <laughs> damn Yankee has the body of a 1977 Chevy Vega. But this Chevy is Mopar powered. There's a fire breathing 426 Chrysler Hemi under that fiberglass body. Back in the 70s, grudge matches were the norm as drivers like Mark and Rocky traveled from strip to strip seeking victories, fame, fortune, and applause. Do you have any special techniques when you're going down that track to get it all the way up to that speed? No, just stay ahead of that gold car. <laughs> How long have you had this rivalry? Oh, seven, eight years now. Today, the competition is friendly. The rivals are friends. But when the light turns green, both drivers are out to claim just one thing, victory. Okay, so everybody knows who the king is, Elvis, right? Well, who is the king of performance artists? We're gonna tell you, Peter Jarvis, he is Silver Elvis, and he tours car shows with his friend Steve Houston, who is also a visual artist. He paints Silver Elvis, and we paint for you now a video portrait of one of the greatest performance artists we've ever seen. We're at the Fleetwood Country Cruise Inn with Silver Elvis and Steve, Steve Houston. Houston. These guys are not just ordinary painters, they're like performance artists. They're they're human robots. Steve, tell me what this is all about. What's what's he doing over here? Well, you know, he's uh, he's a simulation Elvis. He's not an impersonator, he's a simula simulator. And uh, we, we work together. Uh, I do a bit of live painting. Uh, I've got some of my work here this weekend. Uh, we'll be painting a live guitar tomorrow. Uh, he will be my human easel. And uh, there you go. That rocks. So you guys work together. So how do you, uh, how do you collaborate? Well, uh, I, I do um, classic iconic uh, movement of Elvis in my robotic fashion. And uh, he paints these beautiful paintings. So I'm going to bring this guitar and show you. There it is. There's the likeness. This is Silver Elvis on the guitar. And this one he painted in front of a, a rat rod car. And so okay. I did poses with this guitar in front of a rat rod, which was really cool. So it's got rat rod written on this guitar. And uh, people buy these iconic uh, uh, art pieces of Steve Houston's. Okay, so let's take a look at what he's got here. Yeah. What, what, what is this, Steve? What, uh, what have you got going on here? 
we did this live uh, last year's country cruising. Uh, hopefully we incorporated the Cadillac uh, as that's uh, one of the focuses of uh, the Plunkett collection. And this one uh, over to your right uh, was last year's uh, Dover. We participated in Dover on the street. What is Dover for people who might not know that? Uh, Dover is a collection of uh, motorcycles. They gather every Friday the 13th, uh, depending on when it falls. In Last Port Dover, Ontario, and it's a huge deal. Huge deal. They get, what, tens of thousands of people out for that thing uh, over the weekend, right? On few, you well, on Friday the 13th. You can't move unless you're on a bike. Uh, you can't get in. And uh, we did more live street, street art, street performance. Very cool. So, I mean, and it's only appropriate, I think, that um, artists become part of a car show or a motorcycle event because the motorcycles, the cars, they are really like rolling sculpture. That's right. And Silver Elvis is here as the ultimate hood ornament of these classics that are coming in here this weekend. Well, that's very cool. So if you're out at these car events, check these guys out. Look for their art. You won't be disappointed. Thanks for joining us on the show. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you guys. guys. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. When we come back, we're going to share with you a little story about the CAA. That's right. Hi, I'm Elena. Don't go away. Coming up next, more street sport television with Rick Walker. Hey everybody, welcome back to SST, where we have the lowdown on the CAA, that's right, the Canadian Automobile Association. Corey Kennedy of the CAA is here to talk now about why the CAA is interested in bicycle safety. Joining us once again is Corey Kennedy from the Canadian Automobile Association, and you know Corey, you guys are known about, uh, are known for helping motorists uh, when they break down at the side of the road, but uh, you're out there, I guess, looking out for just about everybody on wheels, especially people on bicycles. Correct. Tell me what the CAA, CAA is doing to, uh, I guess, encourage and promote the use of bicycles on our roadways and what, what you're doing to keep everybody safe. Sure. Um, obviously, the, the bike car relationship is becoming a little bit more top of mind as of late, and that's based on the fact that over the course of the past several years, there have been some very high-profile incidents involving serious injuries and or fatalities. Uh, so again, recognizing that we're doing our utmost to ensure that we represent not only our membership from a vehicle perspective, um, but recognizing that our members are also pedestrians as well as cyclists, we, uh, we're in a constant state of evolution. To, to ensure that, again, we go uh, above and beyond to not only meet but exceed our members' expectations. So over the course of the past couple of years, um, we've done our utmost to, to address the, the bike car relationship as well as the uh, the cycling portfolio. Case in point, last year alone, we actually created a, a new program for our members, um, which is called Bike Assist. So if by chance one of our members actually uh, are cycling and, uh, and their bicycle breaks down, i.e. the chain and or the tire goes, whatever it may be, they can actually contact the club. We'll meet them at a designated area and and based on their, their membership level, we'll respond accordingly to ensure that, they, um, that they're serviced and or brought to, to a safe location for, uh, for repairs. Uh, but in addition to that, from a safety or an advocacy perspective, um, we've actually recently partnered up with the, the City of Ottawa back in October of 2012 to conduct a soft launch of the Watch for Bikes campaign, uh, where we actually plan on conducting the official launch come, uh, come May 2013. And the, the rationale behind said, uh, said program is to ensure that we not only educate cyclists, but uh, as well as uh, motorists, uh, regarding the inherent dangers of cycling as well as vehicles, and also teaching them that they have to share the road. Um, so again, from, from our purview, uh, we're educating them what uh, motorists should do whenever they park their vehicles, uh, uh, how they should actually use their, their side view mirrors to ensure that, again, there are no cyclists coming down said roadway because if by chance they actually do swing open their door and strike a cyclist, the actual motorist um, is responsible for 
for the uh, the injury. So, so where could they get information on this? Can they find like safety tips someplace? Absolutely. So they, again, they can visit our, our website, which is caaneo.ca. Uh, in addition to that, like I said, uh, come uh, probably early May, we'll have additional content geared towards the the bike safety portfolio, i.e., watch for bikes. But in the interim, most of the information is already up there. So again, by visiting the site, uh, typing in bike safety, some of the content will come up. Um, but again, in addition to that, we're also lobbying for municipalities to ensure that they actually um, implement designated roadways or, or, or laneways for cyclists. Obviously, case in point here in Ottawa, uh, a few blocks away from us, we have uh, said roadways and they seem to be working extremely well. So again, that's just one of the, the many snippets of different programs that we, we take on. But again, recognizing that, uh, again, individuals have to share the road. And yes, with the warmer weather shortly upon us, there'll be more and more cyclists out there. We're still doing our best to advocate uh, for the safety of all motorists on the or sorry, all road users. Because it's, it's up to everybody, whether you're driving a car, riding a motorcycle, or riding a bicycle or a skateboard, Correct. everybody has to be responsible for their safety and the safety of others. Her. And that's the thing, like I said, you know what, rightfully or wrongfully, there still is a bit of a mindset um, that uh, whether it be cyclists that don't, or, or other uh, road users don't necessarily have to, to adhere to the rules of the road. Uh, it, it, the onus is always on the, the motorist to, to ensure that they go above and beyond and, and act properly. However, that's not the case. All road users have to ensure that they are adhering to, to the rules of the, the road, i.e. the laws, and if by chance they, they do break it, then not only are there financial consequences, but unfortunately it could be serious fatalities and or, sorry, uh, injuries and or fatalities. So the bottom line is, be good to each other out there, be courteous, and if you want to find out more, visit caa.ca. Well, everybody, that's all we have time for today. So until next time, I'm Rick Walker reminding you when you can't get to the car show, we will bring the car show to you. Catch you next time right here on the next edition of SST. Multimedia Production.